stretching across the continents to provide you positive, relevant, and balanced information with fresh insight from those in the know, right in the land, focusing a biblical lens on Israel and the Middle East. You're watching Focal Point. Hello, and thank you for joining us for this latest edition of Focal Point. We look forward to taking this opportunity to share with you today. We certainly do, and we hope you'll stay right there as we bring you positive, relevant, and biblically balanced information about Israel and the Middle East. Helping the church to find ways to stand with the nation of Israel in these unstable times is another reason to stick around for the next 30 minutes. Coming up a little later, our Dan Tracy introduces us to a German pastor who experienced a paradigm shift in his thinking when God brought new revelation about Israel to his life. Then we discuss situations concerning the PLO in Israel with the director for the Center of Near East Policy Research, David Bedeen. And you won't want to miss our enlightening discussion about the challenges surrounding Middle East peace with Israel's recent Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Danny Ayalon. First, however, we were so encouraged by the positive response from you, our viewers, about our previous exclusive interview with distinguished author and lecturer Lance Lambert that we decided to bring you a part two of that interview. This time, Lance sheds unique light on the covenant that God made concerning the seed of Abraham. To me, if God has made a pact with Abraham, uh, and that pact is to do with the seed of Abraham, not through Ishmael, but through Isaac, not through Esau, but through Jacob. And whilst there is on the earth a generation alive, of that seed. That pact is um, uh, functional, operative. Um, it seems to me that uh, we have um, a real call to stand up and be counted. I am, it's, not, it's not just the Jews. It is the church as well that um, in the end is all part of this m amazing plan of redemption for the world. It was never to be so, sort of just simply within the Jewish people, but was to go to the uh, families of the earth. I think it is perfectly clear that we have a terrible enemy and that enemy is spiritual. It's not a physical enemy, it's a spiritual enemy that is permanently stirring up this kind of thing. We call it anti-Semitism. Uh, but I mean, the fact of the matter is that there is an outbreak of it as bad as anything that we have witnessed. It's exactly the same as the run-up to the Second World War, which resulted in some six million at least, if not eight million uh, Jews death, apart from everybody else who died in that war. Um, I'm just saying that this is a battle. I mean, it's a battle for Israel. It's a battle for her existence. We withdrew from Lebanon. What did we get? Hezbollah the biggest militia in the Middle East, armed to the teeth with missiles of every kind and possibly, before long, with chemical weapons from Syria. We withdrew from Hebron. What did we get? We get one of the most violent forms of militant Islam um, in, in the country, in Hebron. We withdrew from Gaza at great cost, uh, with all these high hopes of peace and everything, what did we get? We've had something like 40,000 rockets and missiles. I mean, I don't want to just get into politics, but I can't believe it that um, Kerry has now promised, on, the, on the behalf of the American government, uh, $4 billion worth of aid to the Palestinians. 
Well, if it's like any of the rest of the aid that's been donated to the Palestinian Authority, from Norway, from Sweden, uh, from Britain, uh, from all the European countries, from the States, I mean, where, where is it? Where are the kindergartens? Where are the schools? Where are the hospitals? Where, where are the estates, building estates? Uh, you won't find it anywhere. I mean, it's incredible. Where will you find it? In the pockets of PLO leaders. And the Arab street knows that m much of that money has gone, has been filched, stolen. After a short break, Focal Point's Dan Tracy shares the heart of a German pastor who received new revelation concerning Israel in scripture. And later, we have a very relevant discussion on peace in the Middle East with recent Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Danny Ayalon. But right now, we want you to take a look at the amazing hands-on ministry of Christian Friends of Israel right in the heart of Jerusalem. For over 25 years, CFI has been ministering to the people of Israel one life at a time. My name is Ray Sanders. I'm the executive director and co-founder of Christian Friends of Israel Jerusalem. We welcome you to our program today and trust that the things that are shared with you will be an encouragement to you as you seek to bless and to serve the Jewish people. Thank you for joining us. You know, Jerusalem has a real spiritual significance behind it. It's the city of the great king. So much has happened here through history and so much will happen here in the future. We ask that you would become watchmen on the walls for Israel. And we have a wall of prayer program that's online. We have a number of online publications. And all you have to do is go to our website and sign up. And we have a new distribution center in Jerusalem that's been restored and remodeled. We opened it in the 1990s and over a quarter of a million Russian Jews have been helped through clothing, through appliances, uh, bedding, bath, and financial help. CFI has a bridal salon where we help Jewish brides to be blessed upon their wedding day, a very special gift from the nations. Streams of Blessing is for the very poorest of the poor and needy throughout Israel. Walk-ins off of the street, uh, former war veterans who fought in the Red Army. Hope for the Future helps the Ethiopian Jewry who's come on some miraculous airlifts. They have a lot of needs that they have. Forsake Them Not reaches out to Jewish people who have suffered during the Holocaust that are still alive in their 80s and 90s. And they need to know that we care, that we're on the ground helping them with all the needs that they have. And under his wings and communities under attack are the, is the program that we help uh, those who are suffering under terror attacks in the south of Israel and in various other cities throughout the land. First Fruits is our ministry to believers in the land, be they Jewish or Arab or Gentile. We help all alike, encourage them in their walk of faith. So if you want to help undo damage that was done in the name of the church for 2,000 years, we ask you to join us. Come alongside of us, partner with us, and let us change history and the world that all may see that we're making a difference in Israel, in Israel amongst the church and amongst all those who want to be a blessing. We're here for you to be your hands and feet in Israel. Partner with us today and help us change history. Shalom, Shalom from, from Jerusalem. Jerusalem. To partner with the Ministry of Christian Friends of Israel through prayer, volunteering, or financial gifts, please visit cfijerusalem.org. Welcome back. Recently, our Dan Tracy spoke with a German pastor who after years in ministry received an amazing revelation about God's promises to Israel and how they relate to today. Before taking on his responsibilities as general manager for Christians for Israel, Tobias served as pastor on a pastoral team of the Gospel Forum, one of the largest evangelical churches in Germany. 
My name is Tobias Kramer. My name is Tobias Kramer. I live close to Stuttgart. This year I'm intensively involved in the planning of the Israel and the Church Conference. I'm in charge of organizing a conference. That's my job. For many years I was a pastor in the Gospel Forum in Stuttgart, a teacher in their Bible school, and I continue to teach classes at the Theological Academy in Stuttgart. Now I work full-time as General Manager for Christians for Israel, and I am currently responsible for organizing the upcoming conference. Why did a successful pastor, a key player in a large pastoral team serving thousands of Christians in the Stuttgart area, and in his role as teacher in the Bible School and the Theological Academy, give that up to concentrate his energies on serving Israel more directly and telling the people of God how important it is for the individual Christian to have a proper understanding and relationship to Israel and the Jewish people? Some things you can only understand if God explains it to you, when you get a revelation from God. That happened to me at the last Israel and the Church Conference in 2006. I was already actively pastoring and teaching the Bible. I was a theologian. But I had simply not understood the thing about Israel, and I'd never put any serious effort into the issue. But during that conference, I received decisive impulses and things began to fall into place in my heart. Biblical correlations were presented to me in ways that I had never seen in that way before, and God began to work on my heart. God's promise to Abraham in Genesis 12, 3, where he says, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And again, in chapter 13, 14, where the Lord said to Abraham in the land of Canaan, look around from where you are to the north and the south, to the east and to the west. All the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. These and many other influences began a process in Tobias's life that went for years and continues to this very day. After that came a time during which God himself guided me through his word. For months and years I dealt with what the Bible had to say about the topic of Israel. I came across many, many correlations that were just new to me and that revealed to me God's own heart for his people. God has some things to say to you as well about his people, things that are on his heart and are found in his word. The people of Israel are God's chosen people, and they will continue to be that for all time. And now, God has regathered His people in the land of Israel. And I believe that God has a calling for the body of Christ and a task for each individual Christian regarding Israel. We need to find out what that is. It is important for every Christian to find out how he or she should relate to Israel and what God's individual calling is for each of us in regards to Israel. Finding God's heart toward His chosen people is a major key to our own faith as Christian believers. Understanding His love and faithfulness to what He Himself calls a stubborn and stiff-necked people, and His faithfulness to His covenant with the Jewish people as well as the land of Israel itself, is a bedrock solid assurance for us that He's going to be faithful. In 1987, David Bedin established the Israel Resource News Agency. As an investigative journalist and writer, David has been reporting on the issues of policy for over 25 years. And recently, he shared his views with us on the Palestinian situation and the PLO. Since 1945, when the Arab League realized that there might be an Israel, there might be a Zionist entity in the Middle East, they have objected to the sovereignty of anyone but Muslims in the Middle East. So a decision was made by the Arab League in 1945 when Haj Amin al-Husseini, the Mufti of Jerusalem, came back from Hitler's bunker and came to Cairo that they were going to organize the Arabs in Palestine and around the Middle East to try to wipe out the Jews, to make the area Judenrein, right? Where, we're, where we are right now, the, the, this, this, uh, we're right now in Independence Park in Jerusalem. This was supposed to be a mass grave in 67. It was dug up to be a mass grave because the estimate was that 20 or 30,000 people would be killed in Jerusalem at least, because that was what they were, they were saying they were going to do. And as it turns out, there were 20 people, not 20,000 people killed in Jerusalem. So this movie this became a beautiful park. But it's not that the Palestinians don't want, Palestinian Arabs uh, in total don't want Israel to be here, but the PLO, a, a very clear political entity, working with Hamas, a very clear Islamic entity. And by the way, the, the, the Pope's representative in Israel, the, the late Archbishop Sambi, provided us the draft 
of the Palestinian Authority Constitution, which declared not only would they take all the Palestine, but they would Islamicize the whole area. That's the Palestinian Authority. So their concept is a, an, an Islamic entity, which would be Judenrein, very clear. That's the ideology. That's what they're teaching their children. That's what they're imbibing into the Palestinian, Palestinian Arab um, reality every day. 26 years ago, I pioneered the Israel Resource News Agency and later became also the head of the Center for Near East Policy Research. The reason I did this was because of a, of a gap, of a vacuum, that there weren't enough people standing up for Israel was, while well, Israel was being trashed by the PLO using very sophisticated techniques. Ever since President Reagan in December 88 gave recognition to the pro forma recognition to the PLO and say we will have to bring them to the peace table together with Israel. If the American government were to say, okay, we'll bring you to the, to the peace table, but let's look at a few things. Let's first look at your classroom, you know, what you're teaching in your schools, the brand new textbooks where children are learning through the new textbooks of the Palestinian Authority, financed, uh, school system financed by the West, especially by the United States, where the children are learning the art of the armed struggle to liberate Palestine and to praise anyone who murders Jews. Let's look in the classroom. Let's listen to your media every single night, the call for murdering Jews and liberating Palestine. Let's look at your leaders, Abbas, who in his, in his New Year's message this year, not only did he praise the people who murder Jews, but he also praised Hajimin al Husseini, the Mufti of Jerusalem, Hitler's ally, as the ultimate person for the people in the Palestinian Authority to emulate. When you look at these things, when you look at these aspects of Palestinian Authority society, you realize that there's no, no chance of bringing this person to the peace table. He first has to say he wants peace. You know, peace emanates from victory. When the United States and the Western nations defeated Nazi Germany, the first thing they did, and it went on for 20 years, was the process of denazification. The PLO, set up according to the principles of the Arab League to wipe out Israel, has to go through the same process. First, take away the warlike message of the PLO, and then we can make peace. Don't go away, because right after this break, we sit down with Mr. Danny Ayalon as he discusses the challenging issues concerning Middle East peace. But right now, we want you to take another look into the ministry efforts of Christian Friends of Israel in Jerusalem. Their nine distinct outreach projects are designed to help the real life needs of people right in the land. Shalom, my name is Ray Sanders. I'm the executive director and co-founder of Christian Friends of Jerusalem. We welcome you to our program today. I trust you'll be blessed by all that we share of what's happening in Israel in these last days. Thank you for being with us. Ray and I live in the greatest city on earth. Jerusalem. Here was where the beginning of Christian Friends of Israel started, and we now have representatives in nations around the world. And we have a new distribution center in Jerusalem that's been restored and remodeled. We opened it in the 1990s, and over a quarter of a million Russian Jews have been helped through clothing, through appliances, uh, bedding, bath, and financial help. Forsake Them Not reaches out to Jewish people who have suffered during the Holocaust that are still alive in their 80s and 90s. And they need to know that we care, that we're on the ground helping them with all the needs that they have. Hope for the Future helps the Ethiopian Jewry who's come on some miraculous airlifts. They have a lot of needs that they have. CFI has a bridal salon where we help Jewish brides to be blessed upon their wedding day a very special gift from the nations. Streams of blessing is for the very poorest of the poor and needy throughout Israel. Walk-ins off of the street, uh, former war veterans who fought in the Red Army, and under his wings and communities under attack are the, is the program that we help uh, those who are suffering under terror attacks in the south of Israel and in various other cities throughout the land. First Fruits is our ministry to believers in the land, be they Jewish or Arab or Gentile. We help all alike 
encourage them in their walk of faith. We ask that you would become watchmen on the walls for Israel. And we have a wall of prayer program that's online. We have a number of online publications. And all you have to do is go to our website and sign up. So if you want to help undo damage that was done in the name of the church for 2,000 years, we ask you to join us. Come alongside of us. Partner with us. And let us change history and the world that all may see that we're making a difference in Israel, in Israel amongst the church and amongst all those who want to be a blessing. We're here for you to be your hands and feet in Israel. Partner with us today and help us change history. Shalom from Jerusalem. To partner with the Ministry of Christian Friends of Israel through prayer, volunteering, or financial gifts, please visit cfijerusalem.org. As we close this edition of Focal Point, we are very honored to bring to you our recent interview with Danny Ayalon. As recent Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs for Israel and the founder of The Truth About Israel, Danny shares his thoughts on the challenges surrounding Israel's continuing pursuit of peace in the Middle East. Well, the general media uh, negative sentiments against Israel is really unfathomable. And it goes uh, against the facts, it goes against uh, historical truth, and it goes against uh, the, the interests of the free world. And what is missing are the very basic historic facts that this land belongs to the Jews. Jews, although of the exile 2,000 years ago, have always lived here. There was always a remnant of Jewish life here. There was never a sovereign over the, uh, of Zion, the land of Israel, the Holy Land, other than the Jewish people, anywhere, any, anyone else were occupiers, whether it was the, uh, the Greeks or the Romans or the Assyrians or the Ottoman Turks. Israel was established 4,000 years ago when Abraham came here and made his covenant with God. And Jerusalem was established over 3,000 years ago by King David. And uh, in 1948, we were reestablished in the modern time. Uh, based on our history and uh, on our traditions and all the great civilization and culture that, uh, uh, and history that we built here. Our enemies try to destroy us through the might of arms and uh, wars, and they couldn't. Today, Israel, thank God, can defend itself by itself. Now, since the enemies of Israel could not destroy it by physical um, means, they turned into economic with boycotts. And even that didn't help. Again, with the help of God, Israel's economy now is one of the strongest in the world. They tried terrorism and they didn't succeed with terrorism either because Israel's resolve was also shown. They move now to yet another tactic, which is a political and legal warfare. And this is the delegitimization campaign which we see it in the papers, in the media, which we see it through civil organizations, how they spew uh, anti-Israel uh, lies to create a, uh, a situation where Israel is isolated and Israel is delegitimized. The conflict here in the Middle East is not a territorial conflict. Had it been territorial conflict, the Palestinians and Arabs would have signed long ago because of all the generous offers they were given, including by us. They refused it all. So it's not a matter of territory. It's not a matter of uh, natural resources. God knows there's not much natural resources here. It's much deeper than that. It's existential. And unfortunately, there is this um, thinking among radical Muslims that the entire Middle East, indeed the entire world, should be under Sharia law should be all radical Muslim and this is why for them it's all or nothing. This is something which is not only a challenge, it's a real existential threat 
to all of us in the free world. And this is what um, necessitates really pulling out all our resources, intelligence, military, methods of operations, ideological, to work together against this uh, terrorism. And it can be fought and it can be won, just as piracy was eradicated in the 17th century uh, because the powers of the time pull together and deny them safe heaven. So the fight against terrorism is not just a direct fight, but also to deny them safe haven in places like Iran or Syria or Lebanon or Somalia. Here in Israel, life is very exciting. And for me to uh, get up every morning and go to Jerusalem and to see all Jerusalem or to go to uh, up in the Galilee and to see the Sea of Galilee um, or to go even to the beach in, in Tel Aviv is very exciting because although our land is very small, it also very, um, very much uh, uh, colorful. Uh, you see here a variety of uh, landscape and you feel you feel the hand of God in every step of the way and in every rock, in every piece of sand that you can put your hand or foot on. We would really like to thank all of our guests for their time and their wonderful insight. Here at Focal Point, we really want to keep you informed on what's going on in Israel. That's right. And not only do we want to keep you current on what's going on, we also want you to know about ways that you can reach out and become a part as well. So don't forget, one way you can become involved is to go online at cfijerusalem.org and see the tremendous things happening in Israel today. And while you're there, don't forget to email us with your feedback and topic ideas at info at focalpointtv.com. Be sure to let us know how we can help you stay connected and informed. And when you write, be sure to leave us your thoughts on Israel and the Middle East. Whether day or night, please feel free to contact us by calling the number on your screen. We really do enjoy hearing from you. As always, we look forward to being with you next time as we turn our point of focus to Israel and the Middle East. Right here on Focal Point. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now. Goodbye. Focal Point is brought to you by Christian Friends of Israel Jerusalem. For more information about any of today's guests, email us at info at focalpointtv.com. To partner with the Ministry of Christian Friends of Israel through prayer, volunteering, or financial gifts, please visit cfijerusalem.org. Focal Point is a production of Level E Media Incorporated.